great Jesuit, a very calm and good man, a great companion. I was impressed by his uh, his homilies, an outstanding homilist, a hard worker. He was hardworking and a great educator. I became interested in books and libraries uh, in my time as training as a Jesuit. Even in the juniorate I started working in the library. But especially when I came to theology in Milltown Park, Dublin, uh, I used to spend many afternoons working in the library. And we had a small mission library there for those of us who had worked uh, for our Regency in Zambia. After my ordination I came back to Zambia and I proposed to the provincial to set up a province library at the Novaship in Lusaka and he was fully supportive of it. So I taught myself the ins and outs of setting up a library. I never did a course in library work but I set one up and in the process learnt how to do it. Since 1983 he has been engaged with what I would think is his life's work, his mission in life, which has been to set up and to run libraries and on the side archives. And then when they were looking for a librarian for the new theologus in Hakima College in Nairobi, uh, out of the whole 1400 Jesuits in Africa, mine was the only name on the list. There weren't very many librarians. So that's how I came, if you like, unopposed as librarian in 1983 to set up the library in uh, Hakima. I think I first met him at Hakima when I was doing my last year of theology there. Uh, he was on the staff there, of course, he was instrumental in setting up that library, as everybody knows. And, um, but I was impressed by his, uh, his homilies at mass, community masses, so I was doing a pastoral year, so I asked him to take me for a short course in homiletics, which he did. Every week I would produce a homily and he would discuss it with me, and uh, I still think he's a great preacher, and I hope to have learned something from him. After 20 years in uh, Nairobi, I asked for a change because I, I thought life was very comfortable. I could have continued there forever. And it was a, it was a great city to be in. But uh, I felt, uh, yeah, I was on cruising altitude and I don't think that's the life of a Jesuit. So I asked for a change. And in 2004, I was missioned to Arupe College, Harare. Uh, the library was already established. It was a very fine building. But there are areas in the library that needed development, particularly the philosophy, which was the main source of study uh, at Arupe College. So that's what I started working on initially, uh, building up the philosophy section and the section of books on Africa. I got to know him better when he came as librarian here to Arupe. I was dean at that time, and uh, he was the third librarian, if I'm right, at Arupe College. And he's a specialist, really, in, in collecting books. He is the one, really, that set up a professional staff for the library and started the digitalization of the, of the catalogue. Actually, it had already been started, 
but he corrected some mistakes that I had made um, as dean in that, in that matter. So this section here is, if you like, the core of our library. It's our philosophy section. And it's kind of the, our greatest development in the library. We are a school of philosophy. But we're also a school of humanity, so we have a very good literature section upstairs. But here we have a, a quite a unique collection of philosophy. And I cannot say that really of any other section in the library. But in this part of the world, this collection would be yeah, quite unique. Certainly in the country, it would be quite unique. This is an old book in the library. It's not our oldest, 1690. But um, two, two things that are interesting about it. The, the first one is that it's a book written by a Jesuit on optics the physics of optics, which uh, in the early society, with astronomy and mathematics, optics and science, was a very popular area for Jesuits to write on. And over a period of a hundred years, they would have produced 40 or 50 of these volumes. So it's just a, an old tradition of the society. The other reason for showing it as this is actually number 100,000 in the library. He started the process of work, trying to work with, with e-books and so on. He was a great, he is a great buyer of books and I, I really appreciate it. And very often if I would find a book that I thought the library would, would need, I could recommend it to him and I'd be fairly sure that he would he would get it. The library is the depository of the internet and all the resources that go with it. So moving into soft copy, uh, it's the job of the library to make, to make that available. Uh, and the library staff are there to help people find in the internet what the material that they're using for. So I don't see any great difference in that sense. To me, a library is a place where you get in contact with the material that you're using. And throughout the whole world, everything is going towards the electronic version in everything. Even little, even little shops, businesses are all going electronic with their cash registry, with paying for money, uh, with information on travel, with everything you want to get, it's all going electronic. That's the modern world. Day in and day out, you will find Father Eddie in his library, arranging books, sorting them out, cataloging them, repairing them, circulating them, tracking them, receiving them back. And then he would sit down and order new ones. His ears are among the users of the library, students and staff and visitors, to know what their needs are. His nose is to sniff out what a good book is. He doesn't just order any kind of book. They are quality books. And when I go to the library and ask for the aid for some help, for the aid would stop whatever I was doing and uh, would take me literally to the shelf where I, was, where I would have found the book. And if the books are not there for the aid, you would tell me that I'm going to send you a list of the books that you need. For such and such a topic and by the end of the day I would really have that uh, <clears throat> that list. Anytime you wanted a book in the library he was so willing to to go with you and look up the book and get it for you or try and find any academic resource that you needed. One thing one of the points uh, that struck me a lot was um, uh, when Arupa Jesuit University Library's program was down he was worried about how the students are going to acquire books. He was worried about how the students are going to acquire this knowledge that they are in search for. And you could basically see him in his down moment. And it was until when the program was put back uh, that you could see the joy that is characteristic uh, of, of Father Ed Murphy. You could see the smile had come back. It shows how much he's committed to see people acquire knowledge. And his eyes are in the future to see what 
the institution he's serving might need. What is current? What's most relevant? His whole heart was given to libraries. So, since you know that uh, the library is the central nerve of an educational institution, that's why I think Father Eddie was a great educator. He might have not been in the class, in the classroom, but he was making sure the classroom went well. So he has been uh, very instrumental in, 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 and committed in developing the, the library at Harupe, uh, the e-library, uh, e-books, and also joining um, a online networks of libraries to allow students and staff access e-books um, and e-platforms. He has done that. It's amazing that at his age, he is able to uh, live up to technology, understanding the, 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 the demands of um, e-libraries among young people who are not obviously excited about um, hard books, but uh, soft copies of books to read on their phones, uh, tablets or computers. You see him in his blue coat, he's there every day and he's either working in the shelves or he's uh, in his office uh, working on book orders and so on. He works tremendously hard in that library, he's totally devoted to it. He was hard working. Like I said, I learned a lot of things by just observing Father Murphy. He was very, very hard working. Sometimes you'd actually feel guilty because you'd call in and say, I'm down with the flu. But there was not a day that Father Murphy would say, I'm down with the flu. You'd still come to the office, even when you noticed that um, he was really down with the flu. But he would still come to the office. So this is one thing that I learned, to be hardworking. One of the incidences that show the how Father Murphy really loved work is, it was, I think it was a Tuesday, then he wasn't really okay, he came for Mass, and after Mass, um, the Vice Chancellor, Father Chizito Jimba, told him, please, I see you are not feeling well, but you, you might consider not going to work today, you can just rest. Then he said, no, no, and insisted and went. It was, it was a very touching moment to see how he was really, he was really pushing to go to work. It's, you can't believe it. Somebody, even somebody who is not feeling well, continuing to push so that he can go to work, it shows how much he loved his work here at Arupe Jesuit University. The first time I, I met Father Eddie Murphy was when I was in uh, Lusaka for my novitiate. And uh, upon his arrival, uh, the following days, uh, he was in the library, in the province library in uh, Lusaka. The library belongs to Zambia, Malawi province, and the archives there. And he was there trying to put things in order, um, trying to organize the library, trying to see that everything uh, uh, was as it should be. That is a man that is full of commitment, uh, maybe not even resting enough, committing too much uh, to what uh, the society uh, has put him to do. The thing that strikes me about Eddie is Eddie the worker, the laborer in the field of the Lord. Um, Worked in different countries, different continents, you know, was in Ireland and comes to Africa, uh, works in Zambia, um, worked in uh, Kenya, here in Zimbabwe, he's going back to Zambia. And everything he's done, he's really done it with, with all his heart. He's really done it very competently, professionally, and with great commitment and, and diligence. He really is a not the first librarian, or you couldn't say really he established the library, but he did establish it, I think, as a professional library. But what I liked most about Father Murphy is that he gave me room to spread my wings, to explore my talents, to experiment, uh, to bring in new ideas, to implement um, new ideas, new ways of doing things. He wasn't restrictive, he was very supportive. It's more even liberal, because he lives and gives you freedom to be what you wish to be, to do what you want to do. And he knows when to say no and when to say yes. He was very firm, but firm in a very nice way. He didn't have to say anything in too many words, but he would have said a lot. 
using Irish humor and his wisdom, there are certain things that he would say, and I would pick up what he wants to say to me. And I would take time to reflect on that. So it's, it's, it's a rich experience that I've had here, um, living and working with Father Ed Murphy. Uh, the way he takes in frustration, the way he takes in stress, disappointment, the way he takes in pressure of work, and even surprises in life, the way he has taken this COVID-19 uh, situation this year, it's, it's, it's a manifestation of the, the dynamism of Jesuit life and the call to, to save the world in a very dynamic way as Jesuits. As you know, he's trained as a scientist, but he's taught himself many other important um, disciplines, and especially, I think, the most, most uh, notable one is histories. He's, I don't think there's any Jesuit anywhere who knows as much about the history of the early Jesuits in this province and our neighboring province, Zambia, Malawi, than he does. Yeah, my interest in history grew gradually over the years. Um, in setting up the library in the province library in Lusaka, part of that library was the archives. Uh, and so for a number of years, it was, it was an effort uh, to gather together all the old documents and letters of our early missionaries. And I think that's what really sparked me off in moving into history. And it was very interesting talking to some of the old fathers and old brothers who had great memories of the past, but also some of the very faithful old Jesuits who had themselves in their own bedroom preserved early documents. And when I set up an archive in that library, they would come with their archives and hand them over. And you could see a sense of a great sense of fulfillment in the work that they had done and it being able to be continued. I also remember, you know, uh, meeting in the senior common room or when he was preaching uh, in the chapel. He's a wonderful storyteller. Uh, you really enjoy listening to Father Murphy describing, you know, using words to paint a picture, to paint a story. His preaching is, I've always found something insightful in it. And one of the greatest compliments I could give is almost all the time I stay awake during his homilies. I don't manage that too often with too many people. But he's got something interesting and I find it lifts me up. It lifts up my heart. Same thing his whole style of celebrating. You can tell he's communicating. He's communicating with God. He's communicating with us at the same time. And that, again, helps to lift up the heart. Um, one thing I remember, or one thing that I appreciate about Father Murphy, is, are his homilies. Those are so inspiring for me. And I remember one homily he gave at Unza when he was addressing the students. And it was about our activities. After being so busy with all our activities and the distractions we have, in our daily lives. At the very core of our being is just knowing who we are. Uh, he's a guy who'd come and share stories and uh, when you shared the table with him, trust me you'd enjoy that meal because of the stories, the various stories that he'd share with you, both from his personal experience as a Jesuit and also from his vast knowledge of history, of the society and uh, of the world in general. You can get inspired by his, uh, by his stories when he talks about um, when they came here as missionaries. I especially appreciate his ability to tell us stories and to strike up a conversation with each of us and make us feel so wonderfully at home. He's a great storyteller and has an endless supply of stories, but also a, a wit. Uh, he can, has an insight into particular things in life. It's essential, I think, to have a deeper sense of history of, our, of the Jesuit endeavor in this part of the world. And I think it's actually something that we lack. So I'm very sorry that Father Murphy will no longer be around here for us and for our province to draw on. And now when you're talking about preserving the history, 
preserving our origin, our charism. This is where Father Eddie Murphy fits in very well. In my years then in uh, Lusaka, I began to try and put together a history of the Jesuits in Zambia. I only did most of that work when I was up in Nairobi and then go back every few years and work in the archives in Lusaka. So that's where my interest in history came. It was really from the history of our own province. Uh, and uh, that was the, the result of that was the book I edited on the history of the Jesuits in Zambia. We were, it was quite a remarkable history in this sense that the early Jesuits in Zambia were international, great mixtures of all different provinces uh, and we were never that much associated with the colonial powers. We were kind of independent and in some sense much closer to the people and so the history that we could tell of the activities of those fathers was a history that even after independence we could still be very proud of. And on a personal level he has a very, very regular life, ordered without being fussy. He wakes up, keeps his rooms clean, he takes his teas, his teas are spaced out over the day. The afternoon tea he would, he would do well with a slice of cake and whenever possible some ice cream, why not? He goes for a swim over the weekends, very regularly. He can be a man of routine every weekend, Saturday, Sundays, he goes over to Hannon, swims in the pool, comes back to Rutendo, stretches out his towel and his swimsuit in the sun, and then comes in and has lunch, and when he finishes, that towel and suit are already dry. Keeps fit. Even at his age, uh, he swims every Saturday and Sunday, he comes to Hannon, community where we have a swimming pool, I always know 12 o'clock Eddie will be in the swimming pool. Even though it's cold, he swims right throughout the winter. He's there swimming uh, to, to, keep, to keep healthy and to keep fit. I think that shows great. There's no, the only two that swim in that pool at the moment is me and Eddie. None of the young fellows, I don't, you don't see anybody in that pool, it's far too cold, but we, t we old toughies. We go and swim, and Eddie swims right through the winter. Not, it's not only history, but he has a lot of interest in all sorts of other things. He reads a lot of literature, poetry, uh, and he has kind of reading projects. So you can see him for once, for a while, he was reading lots of books about the digital age and the influence of, of digital technology on society and so on. More recently, he's been reading, I've seen him reading books on the history of mankind. He's been around books all of his life, but not only been around books, but the books have gotten inside of him. Almost any afternoon you can go over to Rutendo and he'll be in his memorial room in there reading away different tomes that I would never be able to get to first base with, but reading constantly and because of that he has an encyclopedic mind. He has known something about almost any topic you could mention. And more than loving history and um, reading novels, he also likes to read poetry. He takes it as something that is spiritual, so he meditates on the poems and he tries to find out what was the spirit behind the poet or what was the poet going through and what was the purpose. Was it to deliver a good message, to denounce or to announce something? I would say it would be very important to develop uh, the skill of reading and, and to have it as a, a, a great resource for life. Um, and it doesn't make any difference whether it's hard copy or soft copy. It's just the reading itself. In the literary word, world, there is a, a, a technical term. It's called intensive reading. And it has a very definite meaning. And sometimes we may say, oh, intensive reading, oh, that's when I face a text of philosophy and I'm looking at it and I'm trying to understand the ideas and it's tough going. Well, that's not 
what they mean by intensive reading. Intensive reading is where you take a text and you read a bit and you stop and you pause and you say, let your mind go. And sometimes your imagination works out all kinds of things. Uh, intensive reading is reading a text but letting it simmer, letting, letting it float in my mind, seeing what does it mean for my life, uh, what's that mean, can I apply that in any way, what significance does that have for me, what's that, what, yeah, just to let me, to stand and stare at a text, to sit and let a text flow round, not racing through a text to get it done, not pounding to understand the idea, but letting the text unleash all kinds of associations, all kinds of connections with my own life, the world I live in, things I've read before, what people have talked to me about, ideas I've heard in my class. That's what is known in the literary world as intensive reading. I'd go to his office and the door was closed. If you do open it, you'd find that he's reading. So this is one thing that he taught me, uh, to read widely uh, on topics that I wouldn't normally read on. So sometimes what I do is, you can see I've got Marichera's book there. I would keep um, a book at a time and I would, I would find time to read. He's one person who takes his time to reflect on uh, any situation that is presented to him before he, he comments or before he commits himself to take a position or to give advice. Um, personally, I have been privileged to enjoy uh, the wisdom of Father Murphy. Um, as a delegate, whenever we meet one-on-one uh, on, one on one or as a group of delegates um, of the rector and director. Um, his analysis of community life, his analysis and perceptions of the young men that he lives with uh, have always been very enriching and enlightening to me. Um, and when I meet him in the group of uh, the community consultants, um, his reflections and ideas and uh, his analysis of situations or the men uh, in the community are very insightful. Uh, he's one person who never, as far as I uh, can remember and could gather from his, uh, his contributions, he never gave uh, any idea or suggestion on the basis of his personal interest, but it was almost always in the interest of the Society of Jesus, the future of the society, the present of the society. And he tapped into his past experiences, uh, which was very helpful. And I found him a very good companion. He's a wise formator, I think. People have lived with him. I lived with him in Mukasa for two years. And I can see the wisdom of his formation uh, the result of many years in formation institutes, but more important than that, I think, many years of Jesuit life, of faithful Jesuit life. Um, I've often uh, found great help in talking to him about problems I have had as problems of formation or other kinds of problems in this, uh, in this institution. He's always a good listener and always a supportive and um, helpful friend. I think he has given his life to formation. Father Eddie has a keen sense, a keen understanding of the young heart, of a young companion. That keen understanding is based in deep love. He loves the young companions. With his peers, he's a great pillar, a source of wisdom. He can advise you, he can correct you, firmly but gently. Sometimes when you get old old and older, as I know from my own experience, it's not so easy to, to relate easily with um, people of a much younger generation. 
But, but Eddie, he lives with young students in, in Mukasa community, goes on holiday with them to Nyanga in the dining room. He's always on one of the tables with the students. And uh, the same with staff. He's always there morning tea with the staff, to, to socialize with the staff, to interrelate with the staff. And at Rutendo, where we, we have uh, our uh, kind of recreation place here at Arupe, um, he's there. He's there. He likes to be with people. He's an important presence. Uh, I, I've been in the business in one way or another for, I don't know, 40, 50 years. So I, I began off in the novice in Lusaka and then went for 20 years to the uh, Hakima College in Nairobi and now I'm here 16 years. Uh, so it's kind of, a, and I, I, I've been always doing some other work at the same time, usually connected with library work and archives. So my role as formator has meant that I have accompanied the young men in their journey of growth and development. Uh, and that has always been a great uh, source of consolation for me. It's a work well worth doing. There are different age groups here at uh, um, Arupe. We have the age group of formators, um, some closer to his age and some of us a little um, far from him. And then we have the group of Jesus information, mostly young. But Father Murphy has been present to all these age groups, like one among each of these age groups. So when he's among the formators, he is very much at home. Um, when he's among the those Jesuits information, he's also at home. Uh, enjoying the jokes, enjoying the energy, enjoying the laughing, enjoying the the noise, which are all different from what was happening during his time in formation, but is able to adapt and and fit into these uh, age groups. He doesn't also like embarrassing people. Living with him has been quite cool. If he sees you doing something wrong, he calls you, quietly sits you down and talks to you. And that is a very good element of a fatherly figure. So um, Father Eddie is actually um, a very good person to live with. He's a good community man. I've lived with Father Eddie Murphy for the last year in community. And it has been a great pleasure to be with him. His warm and gentle nature has shown all of us how to live in harmony with each other. You can't really notice the old age in him when you are with him because you can still feel that enthusiastic nature in him and he's quite still inspiring, he's still young inside despite his age. He's uh, a companion full of life. Whenever we're having a conversation with him, there's nothing like, a, like age, rim, age limit. We just have whatever kind of conversation he will just, you, you feel like the, you don't see him as different from you. You just see him as your age mate. In our community, he was always helping us with, uh, with small activities in the house. He was, doing, he was doing a very great job in the house. You... That's the job of a formator, to accompany the young men and to be with them and to learn from them. Uh, it's a, a two-way process. Uh, and in that, find a, a deep fulfillment. There, there's, uh, in some way, there's nothing more important to do than the dealing with people. And and that that was a good example to all of us. Not only just information, but even some of us who are, are no longer in the initial uh, probation of our formation, but. Um, looking up at him, looking at commitment, um, how he lives his life, obeying simple instructions from our major superiors, from our local superiors, and also um, living uh, as, as a fellow Jesuit among Je young Jesuits. So we are very grateful for that. He's the man who takes whatever instruction is given very serious. 
whenever the rector issues out in a, recomm a recommendation or he sends an email of how community life should be lived like, he takes it very serious. He takes, he takes it the way it, is, it comes. Usually we always had one or two grandfathers in the noviceship in Lusaka, always, even when the numbers were a very small number of novices. But that's, uh, that is not true at the moment. There is no grandfather there. So I will be welcome in that capacity. I will look after the library the, the, that is there. Uh, but above all, one of my major works will be the archives of the province. We have put it in a, a new building. Uh, we have, the collection is a fine collection and it looks very good. And we have 800 boxes of material and each box is full of folders, all in order, but the folders in themselves are not properly indexed. So that's a huge work that will take many years and the years of many other archivists as well. So that's what I will be doing when I, I leave here, according to the plan. You make your plans and the good Lord will decide what way things go. And we know he's going to enjoy it because he enjoys working among books. Um, and so we pray for him and we wish him well. We also pray that um, uh, Father Gaetan, who is going to take over from him, who follow in the footsteps of Father Murphy to continue to work for the good of the development of the library, the good of the development of the university, and mostly uh, for the good of the men and women who are going to be formed through the work of the library here at Arupe. Just to say that I have been very happy in my own life. Uh, I have had a, a great sense of uh, accomplishment. Uh, being a librarian has been in many ways um, a fulfillment for the kind of personality that I am. Uh, I have also been very grateful that I have been a missionary. There's an old tradition in Ireland that, that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years um, that if you are a religious you have your three vows but there is a greater vow than poverty, chastity and obedience. That's what the old monks in Ireland used to say that the greatest and final vow was to leave your country and wander the world for the sake of the kingdom. So that was an old Irish tradition. So I feel I've had that fulfillment too. I have wandered the world for the sake of the kingdom, doing whatever I can do. And that's been mostly library work and formation work. Uh, that, that is really, uh, I have already lived in, I don't know, six or seven countries uh, and that has been not easy. Leaving your own country and your own people, that's difficult. I, I have lost contact with my own people, even with my own family. I have lost a lot of contact down the years. So it's not been easy. And not been easy, always being an outsider, always being somebody who doesn't really belong. Uh, and that's part of the missionary life. The, the fulfilment is, is that the spreading of the good news of the kingdom for the sake of, rather, of the Lord. That's really, so I say that's been a great sense of fulfilment in my own life. As he moves on, I just want to say a very big thank you to him for all that he has done for us and for me in particular um, in Mukasa community. You have been an example to all of us. Thank you and God bless. And I'm grateful for him for being a good uh, formator, for being a good delegate, for inspiring men other Jesuits. So we're all going to miss him, but I know I will miss him in particular. Eddie, we love you. So I'd like to wish him all God's blessing and all the best for his future. Father Murphy, uh, I'd like to thank you for all the many years of service that you've given to Arupe Jesuit University and for all your work within the Zambia Malawi province, being librarian in various places for teaching, for all the support 
the retreats that you've given and the ministry that you've imparted. Um, we thank you so much. So I wish him all the best and I can give him give great thanks to God for what he's given to this institution and to myself. So we say goodbye to Father Murphy and we ask the Lord to be with him, um, especially as he as he is always reminding us that he is in his twilight zone of his life. May he be blessed with joy and happiness and many smiles uh, in these uh, few years that he has to live in this world. And we ask him to pray for us so that we may also enjoy our life up to that age for those of us who will be strong enough to get into their 80s. So we wish him well as he goes on to the next apostolate, which I understand is archives. And we have no doubt that he has made his contribution to make us look good. Arupe Jesuit University has nothing to fear when it comes to presenting our library to peer reviewers, to censors, to higher above people and to users. Thank you very much, Eddie. Go well.